I think that's a, that's a very clear green light against Russian Federation because it's under, it's for for me it was unacceptable to see the results of Madrid summit. I would say I'm um, I'm nervous, a bit aggressive, a bit disappointed uh, because we have we had really high expectations, not only Ukrainians but I'm sure um, our close friends and partners, Brits, uh, Polish uh, people, Baltic states. We expected uh, much more clear messages, not only for Ukraine, but about the Russian in- invasion and Russian um, violations and the Russian threats to, to the NATO. Uh, if we uh, um, go through the text of the communique, um, I would say that that could be happen uh, maybe two years um, ago, before the before the great invasion, invasion, but not now. Uh, I don't. I don't think that that messages which are written, which are made by the um, the heads of the states and, the, and their um, governments, they they are equal to and to respond to this situation which is now in in Ukraine with um, in this full scale uh, war with the Russian Federation. So I would say my colleagues, we are all speaking all all online. Offline, talking about that, we we are really uh, understanding that it happened the same as it happened in Bucharest 2008, uh, when NATO um, um, now not even uh, reacting. It's not normal reaction in 16 months to say again the same words, uh, maybe in different uh, in a different way, but the same um, in 15 years after one and a half year of the full-scale invasion. So do you share your president, President Zelensky's comments? And he's made it very clear that uh, he is very disappointed. Uh, he feels that there is no readiness for NATO to open its arms to Ukraine. He would like to have seen much clearer commitments. Is that what you wanted? For sure. It's like 100, 150% I'm supporting Zelensky's um, statement about the um, first of all, about the respect and about the um, understanding, like which game you are playing. And first of all, this question to our close partners to yes, um, and it's clear written in the um, and can be read in the communique about the leaving the space to to um, to find the common language to communicate with the Russian Federation. But um, that's not okay to talk about Ukraine as well. We are not the we are not um, the coin to play with, and um, it's it's for us it's unacceptable. And if we we can say that um, we we are fighting with Russia first of all, it's they are not fighting with with the NATO, uh, to to be honest. And um, that's going to be endless story. While NATO will say to us, uh, "Come on, guys, only after the winning the war." or finishing the war, it can be just endless, endless for, for Russian Federation because they will never stop. The question is, was the, the future, what, what, you, what you as our close partner, I mean, NATO can say about the, uh, their, their perspective on Russian future, uh, future um, as a state. Although Jens Stoltenberg has made it clear that uh, he does um, want to make things easier in terms of getting rid of some of the stages which normally have to be completed before a country can join NATO. He wants to streamline that. But it's clear that underlying all of this is the concern of some countries that anything more rapid or any more specific timeline could end up with NATO being committed to ending up in direct conflict with Russia itself. You know, we hear this this answer since 2008 when they started to say about the open door policy. And um, uh, the, the problem is that saying again, even like um, avoiding the word invitation, avoiding, we just not, we did we didn't need the timeline or we didn't need to to understand the um, um, the concrete um, demands which Ukraine has to fulfill in order to to enter the to join the NATO. But um, I think this this messages are totally clear for Russia. Okay. Like you have free space enough to move, uh, you can move with your uh, with your um, interest again and again. We will continue to to support as much as we can and as much as we uh, will consider to do that. And it's meaning not about the mass of um, uh, for winning this war, but about the mass of survival. I would say 
I mean, about ammunition and what we are getting uh, in Ukraine from the partners. And it can be just, um, I think that's a, that's a very clear green light against the Russian Federation, because it's, under, it's for, for me, it was unacceptable to see the results of Madrid summit. But but when we pass, even when we had the Kahovka um, uh, hydro, hydro station uh, blowed up, and now just ignoring all that facts which happened for 16 months in Ukraine, I think it's it's uh, incredible diplomacy how to say no to Ukraine but say to to Russia and to to find the common language again and again w- with them because we, we we cannot predict what can happen if we will uh, not be able to see the very very good result or successful result on, in counteroffensive operation and then like we we can be pressed to move to find the um, uh, to start the negotiations but we're not ready for that. And we can say this no for for US as well. There has also been an agreement, uh, several different commitments to provide more uh, military equipment and training. We're going to have 11 nations beginning to train Ukrainian pilots to fly uh, Western F-16 fighter jets. Is that something that you welcome? Yes, for sure. But no, like as in, in military, you have the tactical level, you have the operational level, you have the strategic level. That was made uh, before the before the summit between the the president, uh, the heads of state, um, and it was agreed and announced. And um, I think this this announcement in, during the summit that was like something like a small bone uh, which um, had to be uh, showed for for Ukraine because nothing nothing was to in, like in political way to offer for Ukraine, and that was the biggest mistake. We all understand that's operational level. And it was agreed before. We much more like we are grateful. We are thankful for that. That's not it goes without saying. But I think that the NATO summit is about the, the policy, but not about the um, F-16 trainings. It was agreed during the Rammstein meetings uh, and so on and so on during the visits of President Zelensky to uh, to lots of the states, and we had that coalition. So un- unfortunately, I don't think that was the the level of the summit of NATO summit to say this. To have this in, in communique. Let me ask you about the United States' decision to supply Ukraine with cluster bombs. Mm-hmm. Are you at all concerned about this? We know a lot about the dangers these weapons can represent to civilian populations for months, years to come. Um, do you really think it's a good idea for Ukraine to be using them? I mean, within what is its own country? You know, we have like I just I just had meeting with um, with the military staff, and just before the interview, they said, uh, if someone asks about the cluster bombs, please say them that we are much we are very happy to to get them to see we need we need them that we have lack of them, and the, the problem is that uh, Russians have widely used the cluster bombs in order in order to receive from our side their uh, logistic um, uh, points uh, or senders, they aim target military targets. We have to, uh, and to be efficient, we have to have them. Um, we, it's out of our interest to use that uh, against Ukrainian civilians. Like we, we that's that's uh, abnormal. That's that's something which not can don't need uh, doesn't need explanation. Uh, but I know for sure that these cluster bombs are, are very needed in the front uh, to be efficient against the uh, against the Russian troops and targets. Just finally, a lot of hopes and expectations have been pinned on this big NATO summit. Where do you think the decisions and the announcements that you've heard today, where do they leave Ukraine's counteroffensive and its efforts and its hopes of regaining territory from the Russian forces? You know, I, I saw on the direction of my friends who are serving now and who are just directly on the front line. And they say that the only one, uh, they, all of them, they're saying the only one thing. We will, we will fight up till the end. And um, like, we don't want to pay attention. NATO or not NATO, we will find because that's, that's the purpose um, and that's, that's the idea to, to fight for the, for the state. And I think that's, that's a very strong message domestic message and the message for for our friends and partners um, um, saying we will fight till the end and I hope one day NATO will say Ukraine okay we're ready we we want you to to be uh, to be very close to the and to strengthen Eastern plan because we cannot imagine our future without you I hope 
these all guys and all guys' lives and girls who are not serving, they worse of being the part of the um, uh, big um, defense system of, uh, of transatlantic uh, treaty. Well, that was Solomir Bobrovska, uh, Secretary of Ukraine's Committee on Foreign Affairs and Deputy Head of her country's delegation to NATO.